A perpetual motion machine, as the name implies, is a device that will move forever without any additional input. This is an idea that was popular hundreds of years ago and still is to this day, and it's easy to see why. If you have a machine that will move forever without fail, you've basically invented free work. You could connect this perpetual motion machine to anything from a car, to a sewing machine, or even your cell phone charger. Heck, you could even connect this machine to power a growing lamp to grow your own food. We wouldn't even need the sun at that point. And that's often why when people talk about perpetual motion machines, they're also referring to a free energy machine. But as you might expect, the universe does have a union, and said union has stated that nothing in the universe is free. If you want any work done, you have to trade in something of equal value. Energy can't be created or destroyed, or more commonly known as the first law of thermodynamics. The problem with a perpetual motion machine is that it's asking for a violation of this law. And based on this law, even if you made a device that could perpetually move forever, then the best it could be is a battery, something with a set and limited amount of energy. And once its energy is used up, it's gone. So in theory, at least, a perpetual motion machine could only work as long as nothing takes energy out of the system. The problem then is that there is always something taking energy out of the system, friction. If you have any mass rubbing up against any other mass, including air, some of that motion energy is going to be taken away and transformed into heat energy. That's friction. Friction is the reason why cars stop when the engine is off, why wind doesn't blow forever, and why a perpetual motion machine is physically impossible to design. Nevertheless, back in high school, I'll admit that I was arrogant enough to try and beat said laws of thermodynamics. Obviously I was wrong, but it was still a fun science fair project. The idea I had was this. There is no friction in space. There is no mass. It's just a void of empty, well, space. Then wouldn't that make the Earth itself a perpetual motion machine? The Earth moves, it orbits around the Sun, the Moon orbits around the Earth, and the Earth spins on its own axis. But without friction, it could do that forever. And not only that, but energy is generated from the Earth's motion, in the form of ocean tides. Think of the ocean like a giant compass. No matter which way you turn a compass, the needle will always want to point north because there's a strong magnetic force pulling it in that direction. It's the same principle for the ocean. In this case, north is the Sun and the Moon, and instead of magnetism, it's the force of gravity. The gravity of the sun and the moon are so strong that it pulls the water towards them. This creates bulges in the ocean that we call tides. And no matter how much the earth spins, the ocean water wants to be pointed towards these two massive bodies. So the ocean water is constantly moving to try and point towards the sun and the moon. That's why if you live by the ocean, you'll see that sometimes the water will be higher at some parts of the day and lower at other parts, because you're watching the ocean bulge move. The tides moving is energy released by the movement of the sun, earth, and moon. And my thoughts as a high schooler was that if this motion is perpetual, then the tides are an example of free energy. I legitimately thought I had found a way to break our universe's physics engine. And I spent that year's science fair trying to do research to develop a gravity engine that produces limitless energy. But remember that first law of thermodynamics. Nothing in the universe is free. If there is energy being released by the tides, then that must mean there is energy being lost somewhere else. As a high schooler, I only assumed that because there's no friction in space, the Earth's motion was perpetual. But what I didn't account for was the friction caused by the tides themselves. The Earth is constantly spinning, and the ocean wants to stand still so it can keep pointing towards the sun and the moon. This creates a very slight amount of friction between the Earth and the ocean, meaning the Earth spinning is slowing down. The Earth is losing rotational energy in exchange for the energy in the tides. Now, don't let this get you feeling existential. That's what Halloween is for. The Earth is slowing down at a very sluggish rate. A day will only get about 1.7 seconds longer every 100,000 years. That's over 3.5 million years just for a day on Earth to get longer by one minute. All this further proves is that perpetual motion is impossible. For every opportunity, there has to be a cost. And one last thing I found fascinating is that the same principle has an effect on the moon. As a wise man with an apple-shaped bruise on his head once said, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The moon is pulling on the ocean, which causes the Earth's rotation to slow down. But then the ocean is also pulling on the moon with equal force, causing the moon to speed up. And because the moon is speeding up, that's causing it to slowly move further away from the Earth. So in conclusion, I was wrong as a high schooler, perpetual motion is impossible, and the ocean is more of a cosmic force than we give it credit for. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.